Hello, I'm Dr. Ron Eaglin, and today we're going to talk about stored functions um, and a little bit about where we might want to use stored functions. I'm going to give you a few examples of some interesting things we can do here with stored functions. First, we're going to be working with a database that um, I've used in previous examples, which I call the music database. This is a very simplified version of the music database. However, um, the important things to note for this lecture are that the database here has got three important tables that we're going to work with. Songs, which has a foreign key pointer called album ID to albums, which has a foreign key pointer called artist ID to artists. So you can see that there's three tables with two foreign keys that basically point to other things. Okay, I'm going to close this. Um, then we're going to look at um, the stored procedure from a previous lecture. Now I created this stored procedure called insert song which allows the system to correctly insert a song with the song name, album name, artist name, and track number. Now, if you looked at that previous table, you know there's three tables that are going to have entries here. So what the logic was for this insertion was it first had to look to see if the artist existed, and if it didn't exist, it had to create it. Okay, If it did exist, it had to get the ID back because that ID was then the entry that had to go into the album, okay, or into the artist, and, and that pointed to then the album itself had to point to the artist. Okay, so there's this pointer thing going on where the album points to the artist, the song points to the album, and you've got to know what it's pointing to by the integer ID, which is the primary key of those individual tables. Okay, if you're confused with this, then you, want to, you definitely want to take a look at the previous lecture on the stored procedure, which explains this very well. Now we're going to make the assumption that you follow the logic of how those pointers work. Now, um, what I want to do is I want to simplify the logic a little bit here. So, um, in this case, I'm going to um, I'm going to actually well first let's go ahead and close this and um, let's look at what we can do with the logic here. Now, I have a logic in the stored procedure that first does one, brings up the count of how many things are in the, in this case we'll start with the artist table, but counts how many things are in the art, how many artists are in the artist table that match that artist name. And if there's zero, it goes ahead and creates it. If it does, if it's zero, it, it goes ahead and finds out what the idea of the one is. Well, I have the fairly convoluted logic, not convoluted, but I have some fairly um, lengthy logic to do that. And I want to encapsulate that inside of a function. So um, if we were to look at, let's say we're going to take the album, okay, and let's create a function called get album ID, and let's see how we can use that in the stored procedure to be a little bit more um, straightforward. So this function called get album ID is going to return a scalar. So if you look at the function itself, we see that a scalar, an integer, a var care, a specific single value is a scalar function. Functions can also return tables, so you can actually have a return of a complete table, but in this case it's going to be a scalar. And the format of a function is, when I use FUNC, that isn't a requirement, but I use FUNC to say, okay, this is a function, it has a value that's passed to it, it has to return, so it has to have a returns, and in this case it's going to return an integer, whatever that ID is, and then it has an as, beginning and end, and the last that thing that has to happen in this function is you have to actually have a return value. Now, my default is going to be returns zero. Zero will be if it doesn't exist. Now, what I can do is I can take that logic um, that I had in my stored procedure, so I'll do declare, uh, I'm going to actually declare, do it on cap, declare, um, account and I'll call this album count okay as an integer okay and I'm gonna do the album count will be set at album count equal to and now I'm gonna do the select statement select count and I can count all it doesn't matter what I count from albums where name is equal to at album name. 
Okay, so I'm going to get that number. And now I can do an if, because if the album count is equal to 1, okay, well, and actually what we can do is we can say if it's, let's just do if it's greater than or equal to 1, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to return an ID. So I'm going to have a beginning and end that go with the if statement. But in this case, I'm going to have return. And I need to figure out what I'm going to return. Well, let's, we only, it's a scalar. I've got to make sure I only return one thing. So I'm going to say select top one from albums where name is equal to at album name. So I'm going to return the, the first album that's in that list. Okay, and that's going to return that. And I don't need anything else. If, it, if it's not greater than or equal to 1, it's 0, and it doesn't exist, and it returns a 0. So that's the whole um, logic that goes with this function. So it returns, always is going to return something. If, it doesn't, if this if isn't true, it's going to return a 0. And if it is true, it's going to return the top one. Now, you might be saying to yourself, well, what if there's what there is actually two or three albums that match that album name. Well, in that case, you probably might need to go one step further to determine which is the correct album that goes with this. But for right now, we're going to take this as the primary logic here. And um, let's see, I've got a syntax error, select count, and it's going to be, let's see, now let's go ahead and debug this, line 14, 9, 10, 11, 12, okay, 14. Okay, in that case, Oh, there is a syntax error. I actually have to tell it what to select. So it has to select the top one ID. It's returning an ID. I didn't tell it what to, what to return. So that syntax error that I had there would be that I select ID from albums. Okay, so now it's going to actually execute correctly. So let's go back over and see if we can actually, um, well, you know what, and let's do this. Let's do this with the song too. So um, now, Here's a little trick that I can do. I created this function, okay, get album ID. Um, I can do the same thing with song ID. I, and by the way, I've already done it with artist. Um, let's make this song name, okay, declare song count. So as you can see, the pattern of the logic is the same. Now, what's nice about the way that I wrote these tables is that I used ID, I used name, you know, I didn't have specific things. The table, so in other words, the songs table knows that the name field is the name of the song. So I don't have to change the where name equals. It's going to be the same in all those tables. Which is really nice. So, so this little bit of rewriting here allowed me to now have the function get song ID. And if I go over here and I look at my functions, okay, so if I look at my table and I look at, um, in this case, I'm not looking at the tables, I'm looking at the functions and I refresh because I created two. And I look at the scalar valid, valued functions right now, which are right here. This is how you get to them table functions. Table, scalar valued, I've got get album, get artist, get song ID. So they're all there. Now, what I can do is my previous um, store procedure here, I can now do it as an alter to. And I can now change the logic in here so that that logic is a little bit simpler. And if you look at the artist ID, what I did in this case is I declared an artist ID and I set it equal to function get artist ID. Now I can do the same thing here. I want to declare an artist. Now I don't need a count anymore. The count is actually encapsulated. So I can say get declare album ID and I can set that album ID equal to, I don't want need this anymore. Okay, I can now set it equal to dbo func function get album ID and I can pass it the album name <coughs> and my then then my other logic 
will be that if the album ID is equal to zero, okay, I'm just going to do the insertion here, which is this part right here. I'm just going to take that up here. And I don't even need any more of this logic, so I don't need an else and any of the stuff that goes with the else. And there it all is. So, uh, and I can do the same thing with the song. I, I could check to see if the song actually is in there too. And the nice thing is that would be relatively straightforward to do. So, um, in fact, let's do that. I already created this, so we'll say declare. song at song ID and that's going to be an int and I can then do set at song ID equal to dbo dot function get song ID and I can pass it the song name and then I only do this insertion if that song doesn't exist so if at song ID is equal to zero. Then all I have to do is wrap this up and begin and an end, and I'm done. So now it actually will not do in the insertion of the song if the song already exists. That way I can avoid creating duplicate songs. And I just compiled it, and the whole thing compiled successfully. Now, um, what are some things that we can actually now do with these functions now that we've got them, besides the way that I use them right here, which is kind of interesting? Um, but I can kind of go one step further. Well, let's look a little bit at my values in my tables before I do this. Um, if I were to look at the songs, okay, and I select the top rows, and I've, okay, I've got only got one song in there, um, and I wanted to say, and I got the artist here. Well, there is this link from the song to the album ID. Um, so let's do a query. And the album was good by Yellow Brick Road. So let's say select um, star from songs where album ID equals one. Well, this is going to get the songs that I just had there, but album ID equals one is kind of arbitrary. In other words, um, what does that actually mean? I mean, you do you know that the Goodbye Yellow Brick Road is album one? Well, you know, that's that does make it arbitrary. So but but what about if we were to say that um, we wanted to search on the Goodbye Yellow Brick Road? So um, so let's see, where funk oops, let's put it as DBO dot function get album ID. Now we want to return that function album um, get album ID. And now we're going to put goodbye yellow brick road in here. And it does actually have to be spelled correctly, otherwise it won't find it. <coughs> um, whoops. And this will get, whoops, I'm kind of writing this a little bit back where I actually, um, I'm, bleh, bleh, <laughs> trip over my tongue. I actually have to have the where clause be an equality. But what I'm going to make that equality is album ID equals, okay, so because album ID is in songs, um, is equal to the get album ID for Goodbye Yellow Brick Road. Now if I run that one, I get the same results as I did when I set album ID equal to one. But this function actually can get back the value based on the name of the album. So it has some utility, but what you should notice is that, um, let me move this down so you can see a little bit better. Um, what you can see is that I embedded that function inside of a select statement. So the function can be, in, can be embedded inside this. It's, it actually truly is a function. So hopefully this gives you a little bit about functions that can get you up and running and how they can be used. That return value is extremely important. and um, it, lets you do some pretty nice encapsulated coding when you're dealing with um, um, with stored procedures and stored functions and trying to write code that encapsulates database logic inside the database. So 
Hopefully this is very useful. Thank you very much. Good programming.